hope you're doing well. We love you and I can't wait to see you. Bye! Bye. Hello, we are the Kawano family from Tokyo, Japan, where we serve at Oko Baptist Church. We hope you all are doing well in this very difficult time. Thank you so much for your love, prayers, and support throughout the years. Please come back again next year and help us reaching to unreached people. See you next year. Bye bye. Oh, good morning, the gathering. This is the piano family. Hi. Hi. We miss all of you. We miss our church family and we cannot wait to see you all again. We're sending love and blessings your way and everyone stay healthy and safe. Bye. Bye. Good morning, Gathering. It's great to see you guys this Sunday morning. Uh, let's take this time just right at the top to say Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, our grandmothers, and just everyone who has raised a child. Um, we just want to say thank you. We love you guys. We're so grateful for you. We wouldn't be here without you. Uh, let's just continue. Let's jump right into worship. Um, make sure that our hearts and minds are ready to receive the word that God has in store for us today. So let's let's sing. Let's proclaim how great God is this morning. So let's sing. We have been justified by faith through Jesus Christ. It's only by His grace we stand.
this time to, to greet one another, to <clears throat> proclaim how great uh, the glory of God to one another, and make sure everyone in this church family feels welcome this morning. So let's take this time uh, as we get to greet one another. say happy Mother's Day once again, top us off. Um, but I also wanted to share with you guys a couple of verses from Ezekiel 36, uh, verses 22. It starts by saying this, Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations through which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God. But through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations, gather you from all the countries, and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness. And from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. I think it's an awesome verse for us to to dwell upon, for us to meditate upon, as we go into the song that we introduced last week, it is finished. So I want to encourage everyone to, once again, join us as we sing.
let's pray as we continue to keep our hearts in the mindset of worship as we ready and prepare our hearts to receive God's word so that we may be sustained by it. So let's bow our heads, let's pray. Dear Lord, good morning to you. Thank you so much for everything that you have done for us, that everything that you have been providing for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that through you it is finished, that our sins are forgiven, that our salvation is secure, that our place by your side in heaven is, is, is assured to us, Lord, because of how good, because of how loving, because of how forgiving you are. just like the verse that we were reading this morning let our hearts be renewed and let our hardened hearts become soft again let us continue to, to worship you to return to you Lord to realize that we don't have to be perfect and it's okay for us to go through tough times and it's okay for us to doubt, it's okay for us to, to suffer and to be in pain, Lord. But that we should always use all of these things to come back to you, to come back to your side, to be reassured once again in your character. Lord, help us to remember that as we as we listen to, to the message that, that is in store for us today. Lord, I want to pray all of these things in unity with the rest of this church family, Lord, and according to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Tim, for leading us in singing and worshiping, not just for today, but for every Sunday. And I know that I can speak on behalf of our church. And we all appreciate you and Johannan for what you do every Sunday faithfully leading and singing, faithfully pointing us to Jesus. So I want to thank you, Tim and Johannan, for all that you are doing. Thank you so much. Today is Mother's Day, and we want to take this time to honor our moms. You see, mothers, you all do so much. You sacrifice. You're very selfless. There's so much that you do behind the scenes because you care about your children. You love your children and you want your best for your children. And there's so much that you do that no one sees, so much behind the scenes. And today we just want to thank God for you. We praise God for you and all the sacrifices that you have made throughout the years. And so thank you. Uh, we want to honor you. We, we thank God for every single mother. Now, on Mother's Day, this can also be a time where, where there's just a lot of hurt and pain, and the reasons can be many. Maybe for some, you had a vision for your life, and that you were hoping that by this time in your life, you'd be a mom, and you're not a mom, and Mother's Day is just a reminder of where you are not. Uh, there are others. You, are, you may be a mom, but as you look at your your, your family, as you look at who you are in relation to your children, things are not the way that they're supposed to be. And as a result, this brings you sadness. This day brings you sadness. Or maybe you don't have a good relationship with your mother, or maybe you're a mom and you don't have a good relationship with your kids. And this causes some strain in your heart. And as you see other people rejoicing, you think about your life and where your, where your relationship, either with your mom or your relationship with your children, where they're not, this brings a lot of hurt and pain. And then maybe there are those, maybe there are many out there right now, you have lost your mother. And Mother's Day is just another reminder that your mom is not here, that you can't call your mom, you can't talk to your mom. There may be some regrets in your life. And so this day is very painful. What we're going to do in just a few moments, we're going to spend some time in prayer. And we're going to pray, first of all, thanksgiving. We're going to pray thankfulness for all of our moms. And then we're also going to pray that God would, would bring strength and healing um, in this day of pain that some may be going through. 
God loves all of us, right? God loves all of us. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to rejoice with those who rejoice. We're going to weep with those who weep as we celebrate our moms. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for the opportunity that we've just had to, to worship you. We also thank you for this moment, for this day that we have to honor our moms. We thank you for every single mom out there who has sacrificed, who has given so much of themselves. Moms who do so much behind the scenes because they love us. Father God, I pray that on this day that they will feel honored, that they'll feel blessed. But God, we also know that there are many out there who are hurting because of what this day represents to them, what this day brings. And God, we just pray that whatever the hurt is, whatever the pain is, that that you would bring healing, that you would bring hope. Holy Spirit, we ask that, that you would give strength to those who, who are just, who are just broken hearted and heavy right now. God, we, we just, we pray for, for encouragement today. Maybe for their, maybe there's some who've lost a mom and this is a day of emptiness. Maybe there are, are women out there who may, maybe at this point in their lives, they thought they're going to be a mom and they have no children. We pray that you provide hope. God, for every other circumstance out there, we pray that for healing and strength and comfort. But God, on this day, we want to thank you for all of our moms. We want to thank you for giving us our moms. We thank you for the women in our lives who appointed us to you. Lord God, we thank you. We praise you for our moms. We lift up all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to all of you our guest speaker for this morning, Chaplain Colonel Vi Leal. I am so honored that he's going to be speaking to us this morning. I've known Vi for a very, very long time, going all the way back to my days at the University of Hawaii. Uh, we went to college together. We also went to seminary together. Vi has been one of those men who truly walk with Jesus in such a way that, that when I look, looked at Vi through college and through seminary, I said, I want to be just like that. I want to have a relationship with God that is that real, that exudes Jesus that much. Vi went on to become an army chaplain. In fact, at this time, Vi is, is the first chaplain who became a colonel of, of Samoan descent. Okay, so let me get that straight. First chaplain who became a colonel of Samoan descent. I, I hope that makes sense, but that's just a big deal. That's a big deal. And Vi and his family, right, after all these years of not seeing Vi, Vi and his family, they have become part of our church. And I'm so excited about that. I mean, it is an honor to have Vi and his family um, become a vital part of who we are as a church. In fact, his wife, Lana, is the one leading many of our outreaches now uh, during this COVID-19 crisis. So we're so thankful for the layouts. Well, this morning, Vi has a very important message for us that comes straight from the Word of God. So Vi, please share with us what God has laid on your heart. Hello, I am Vi Leo. I wanted to thank Brother James for this opportunity to preach for the gathering this Sunday. So thank you for joining us today as we share the Word of God together. Today is Mother's Day. I wanted to wish all the mothers a blessed Sunday. Thank you for your faithfulness to God and your services for the church. I wish you and your family a happy and peaceful Mother's Day. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 12 to verse 18. Philippians chapter 1, verse 12 to verse 18. And let me read. And now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually advanced the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is because I am in Christ. Most of the brothers have gained confidence in the Lord from my imprisonment, 
and dare even more to speak the word fearlessly. To be sure, some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of good will. This preach out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, thinking that they will cause me trouble in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Only that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is proclaimed. And in this I rejoice, yes, and I will continue to rejoice. May God bless the reading of his word. I don't think any of us could have predicted our current circumstances. COVID-19. Coronavirus numbers has a Friday, 8 May 220. In the U.S., over 1.2 million have tested positive. The U.S. has had 75,000 plus deaths. The world has lost over 260,000 lives. Hawaii has over 600 tested positive and 17 deaths. Who would have imagined a pandemic. It has been over 100 years since the last. So how has it changed our circumstances? Stay-at-home orders, 14-day quarantine, mask, six feet apart, close beaches and, tra and trails, not to mention the emotional chains of panic and grief. It seems that some doors will be open again here in Hawaii sometime soon this month. Hallelujah to that. However, most of us know that there will be lasting effects in our economy, life, style, and world. So let us seek peace with the Lord and examine His healing words. How did Paul handle his restricted circumstances? This morning we shall experience Paul's approach which proved to be a means for the propagation of God's truth. First, God uses Paul's circumstances for his glory. If you take a look at verse 12 to 14, you will notice that the Apostle Paul is explaining how his circumstances are actually furthering the cause of the gospel rather than hindering the gospel. The Philippians knew that Paul's circumstances were not good. He was in prison and they were concerned for him. It is logic for a church to be concerned if their pastor was in jail, but also for the very gospel that he preached. So Paul responded to their concern. He explained to the Philippians that their fears were unfounded, that his imprisonment wasn't going to result in the hindering of the gospel, but in fact, by God's glory and sovereign providence, the gospel was going to spread all the more, despite his circumstances, and even because of his circumstances. Paul did not overlook his hard circumstances, for he plainly stated in this passage that he wanted the saints in Philippi to know the things related to him his restriction. He was in prison, and there were other believers who, out of their selfish ambition and envy, sought to cause Paul additional distress in his imprisonment. Paul overcame them by focusing on what God was doing even in the midst of them. As he stated in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, 
though he was in prison as a criminal would be, the word of God was not imprisoned. Paul's circumstances were proving to be a means for the greater progress of the gospel. And so there was cause to rejoice. That does not mean that Paul enjoyed being chained or maligned by others. But it does mean he kept a godly perspective and so found joy. Circumstances, whether bad or good, when joined with a godly perspective, will result in rejoicing. The opposite is also true. Good circumstances, when joined to an ungodly perspective, will result in a host of negative attitudes and action. Now stop for a moment and think about what it is that we typically focus in on when we in the midst of a difficult trial. Just like our situation right now. Most of us, when we are facing with overwhelming circumstances, we will talk about the situation. We might complain. We might post it on Facebook. Our sorrows, our woes, feeling. We just need a shoulder to cry on or someone to listen. We might seek their advice on how to deal with things. We may ask our church members to pray for us. All those responses are common among all Christians. It is okay for us to speak freely with one another about the tough issues we may be facing and receive advice and be prayed for. In some situation, we might need godly professional counseling. Today, there is another better way, and Paul shows it to us by his response. Paul judged everything by God's purpose. I find it fascinating that he doesn't mention his own circumstances or complain about his imprisonment. Is it as it doesn't matter at all? The only thing he cares about is that the gospel be preached and the people come to Christ. We must do what Paul did. We must think biblically about our trials in light of sound doctrine. We must, we must fight the natural course of our thinking in time of trial and affirming as Paul did in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Now, my friends, let me just say that that is hugely important for us. Paul is in prison for the gospel. But what Paul says here about his circumstances has a universal application to all Christians in how we look at our circumstances and especially the hard circumstances of our lives because the Apostle Paul is absolutely convinced that our circumstances, however difficult, have in them a large purpose the glory of God, the gospel of Christ, the propagation of the truth of God's word. Number two, how did Paul's imprisonment become a means for the progress of the gospel? Paul is reminding us that prison bars cannot stop God's plan for the progress of the gospel and God's plan for His church. May that be a reminder to us that our current restriction to congregate to worship on Sunday cannot stop the gospel from preaching and God's plan for His church. Paul may be chained up, but he's chained up to cards. They are hearing the gospel whether they wanted to hear it or not. So the gospel has spread all the way to the cards. Maybe it was through this very encounter, the cards are witnessed to, 
They embrace Christ. They share others who embrace Christ. But the Apostle Paul is saying, by God's glorious sovereign providence, the gospel is going to spread all the more, despite his circumstances. And even if I am chained up, but the gospel is not. The gospel is going forth. We can be sure Paul believes what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The Apostle Paul knows that the gospel cannot be stopped. Why? Because as far as Paul is concerned, his circumstances were not the big picture. God's plan is the big picture. The gospel is the big picture. The spread of the gospel, that's the big picture. His circumstances are only part of that picture. Yes, those circumstances are important to God, but they are not at the center of things. And so when things go bad for Paul, that does not become the crisis of the moment or of the day or of all time. Because all of those circumstances, good and bad, the Apostle Paul knows that God is working for his good and is using for the building of his kingdom. The problem you see is we we'll put our circumstances at the center of things. And we have declared a crisis. In fact, what is at the center of things is the gospel, is the exhortation of Jesus Christ. And all of our circumstances, good or bad, are just a part in that bigger picture. And that's how the Apostle Paul looked at life. I am a disciple of Christ. The big picture, he is saying, is the advance of the gospel, the declaration of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And all of my circumstances fit in that big picture. And so he says to the Philippians, don't look at me and think that somehow God has made a mistake. No, my circumstances are under the sovereign control of my Heavenly Father. And God's gospel is going to go forth no matter what. Therefore, God will use even these circumstances for the expansion of the gospel. And so it changes, it reframes the way that the Apostle Paul looks at his situation. It ought to reframe the way that you and I look at ours. We ought not to be surprised by hard circumstances that come into our experience. We should recognize that when those circumstances, when those trials come, we have an enormous privilege and gospel opportunity to make those circumstances count for the glory of God, for the spread of the gospel, for the witness to Christ, we ought to be asking the question, how in my response can I serve the further, further progress of the gospel, even in these circumstances? Paul says to the Philippians, don't worry, my circumstances may look bad to you, but they have served the greater progress of the gospel. Number three, there is a prevailing joy in preaching the gospel. Look at verses 15 to 16. Paul's rivals were hoping that their increased success now that Paul was out of the picture, would prove to be irritating and distressing for Paul. These jealousy preachers expect Paul to be unhappy and troubled about their ministry success. 
but he is happy that the gospel message was being proclaimed. But notice how even in this Paul looked at for what great thing the sovereign God was doing in his trial. He wrote, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, yes, and I will rejoice. Paul did not let the efforts of others who purposely tried to cause his distress bother him. Paul overcame his circumstances by keeping his focus correct. He rejoiced that Jesus Christ was being proclaimed regardless of the motives of those doing the preaching. To be sure, he would rejoice even more if everyone had true motives. For that would demonstrate godly maturity of their part that would be glorifying to God. But even if they were preaching Christ with wrong motives, Paul was glad the message of Jesus Christ was going out. He stresses that point by repeating that, yes, and I will rejoice. His resolve to rejoice over the proclamation of Jesus Christ would not waver regardless of any personal attacks and hurts he would suffer from those who were doing so with wrong motives. The Philippians don't quite know how to react to the progress of the gospel amongst these other preachers. Some who love Paul and some who don't. While Paul's in prison, and Paul says to them, Look, when the gospel goes forth, I'm happy. No wonder he had a prevailing joy, even in prison. And church, this is one of the ways God is telling us through his servant Paul that we must work toward experiencing prevailing joy in life. We must set our thinking on the right things in a time of trial. We must raise our attention above the mere circumstances of our trial, or even above how that trial is making us feel, and set our thinking instead on the sovereign God who is above our circumstances and on the ways that He is working through our trial to bring about His good purpose. I challenge us to love the Lord and the Word of God. I want us to understand it more and more and appreciate it more and more every day, every week, every year. I encourage us to live it out in joy and in gladness as we bear witness to the truth. I want us to have conviction about the gospel that we believe. Do you understand how gospel center, how Christ center Paul's way of thinking is? And do you realize how this can be transforming for the way we approach life, especially during this time of trials and suffering? Paul makes it clear that Christian possesses the knowledge that the Word of God can't be restricted. Amidst the sins of this world, the church must attain the confidence that the Word of God cannot be in prison or restricted. I wanted to encourage you that God's unchanging covenant love for us is the ground of our exhortation of Christ. The coronavirus isn't or doesn't call into question God's uh, faithfulness or trustworthiness. His word is as sure and as firm now as it has always been. 
All we are acquired to do is to be faithful to the Word of God. Please take comfort in knowing that no matter how much our circumstances change, God and His sovereignty remain faithful. God is always faithful. May God bless you. May the Spirit of God help us to understand His will and His word. God bless you. Thank you very much, Vi, for a very, very powerful message about the gospel and how the gospel is so powerful that, that it doesn't matter what circumstance is in front of us, that the gospel will continue to spread. And, and, and just a challenge for us to be obedient to God no matter what, because the gospel is that powerful. And when we're obedient to God, we get to join in with what God is doing. So awesome. Thank you very much, Vi, for your message. Now, this morning, as a church, we will have three ways we can respond to what was just preached, what was just taught, or three ways to respond to the ways that the Holy Spirit is convicting us and moving in our heart. Uh, first way is this. Some of you out there, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We want to encourage you this morning. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you take this time to, to just pray. pray. Pray to God. Pray to Jesus and, and just acknowledge your sin, right? So let this prayer be a be something that comes from the depth of your heart. Acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge that you are sin, you're a sinner. That because of your sin, you're separated from God. And you know, and repent of your sins. Turn away. Turn the turn towards Jesus. Right. Turn from your sins and turn toward Jesus. And believe that Jesus died for your sins. That Jesus uh, took on the wrath of God for your sins. That He became sin and suffered God's wrath for you, and that he rose from the dead. And just surrender your life to Jesus. Pray that prayer. Pray that. Pray believing that. Go to God. And, and, and if you truly mean that, Jesus is there. Jesus saves you, right? He, he saves you. And so, so just, just pray and, and ask the Lord to ask Jesus to save you today. And, and if that's you, just get on our website, thegatheringhawaii.org, and there's a section where you can ask for prayer. Please email us if you have any questions. Uh, we would love to contact you and uh, talk to you more about what it means to follow Jesus. Another way that those who are followers of Jesus can respond to this morning's message is this. We want to ask you, if you are a follower of Jesus, to examine your heart. Examine your heart. Just check your heart. See where you are with, with, with God. And after examining your heart, we ask every Christian to participate in communion. So if you're a follower of Jesus, we're going to ask you, to partake in communion. So we're going to ask you to have bread and to have grape juice. The bread is a symbol of the broken body of Jesus that suffered for your sins and mine, right? Jesus suffered. He suffered physically. The grape juice is a symbol of the, the blood of Jesus, uh, is a symbol of the blood of Jesus that covers all sin. So as we eat the bread, as we drink the grape juice, we remember Jesus' death until he comes, right? We remember Jesus' death until he comes. Now, if you don't have bread or grape juice, get something similar. Get something that, that, that represents Jesus' body and his blood. Now, there, the third way that we respond is this, through our giving. Um, the first way that you can give is through our website. You can go to our website, www.thegatheringhawaii.org, and you can get on our website, and on our website, there'll be a give button. You click on the give button, and you can follow the instructions on how to give. Another way that you can give is by mailing your check to The Gathering, okay, to The Gathering P.O. Box. And so you can mail your check to The Gathering P.O. Box 893157, Mililani, Hawaii, 96789, right? We hope you have uh, just an awesome time responding to the gospel this morning with your family, with whoever you're with as we sing and as we worship Jesus together in response to him, right? Let's worship Jesus together. Let's continue to, to praise. Let's continue to sing and, and worship our God with, with this next song, Rock of Ages. So let's sing.
bow our heads, gathering. Let's quiet our hearts, quiet our minds as we as we reflect on the message that was just given to us, as we reflect on the words that we just sang. So let's bow our heads, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, let us always let us always cast our minds to Calvary. Let us always remember blood that you shed for for us, the the sacrifice, the nails in your hands and in your feet, Lord, the the whipping, the scourging that you endured, and all of that, a great reminder for your overwhelming, your overpowering, your more than satisfying love for us, Lord, and this great love of, of yours that you have for us to should help us pause, should help us reflect, to see the value that we have in you because of what you were willing to give, the sacrifices you were willing to make, Lord, to, to have us, to redeem us, to renew us, to ransom us from the clutches of sin, Lord. This is something that is mind-blowing, that is is miraculous beyond all words, Lord. And help us to never get tired of that. Help us to never grow complacent. Help us to never go through through worship or through Sundays or whenever it is we're giving you worship and, and praise as as just a chore. It's just something that we go through the motions with. to know that you are good, that you never change, that you remain the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Once again, Lord, like, help us to keep our eyes focused on you, help us to hold on to the hope that we have in you as we, as we go on throughout our day. Lord, it's, it's in all these things that we, we want to pray in your name, Lord.